I want to kind of work now to integrate and kind of change gears a little bit. And I want to bring back in Allie and Denise with Carolina One on real estate. Allie, Denise, one, first and foremost, you guys are, if you could tell our listeners who you are and what you do and your piece, if you will, or your involvement with this project, then let's continue the conversation. Denise Henderson, I am a new real estate agent in New Homes Division. I'm a sales and marketing agent for Prosperity Builders, particularly for Bermuda Point Town. What I do is sales and marketing for Bermuda Point Town. <laughs> Allie? Hi, thanks very much. I'm Allie Bring, also in the New Homes Division at Carolina One. It was absolutely an honor and a privilege for me to work with Prosperity Builders and uh, with Gregory Ferry Towns. We were able to help 36 individuals who would not have been able to afford a home near where they were. We were able to help school teachers, police officers, folks that work at MUSC and in the public and private sectors in and around the Mount Pleasant area. So for our listeners, let's make sure that we are clear in this. We got two sides of the house. We got the builder developer. So that's the person that puts the project together. And you also have the sales team as well that are serving the public directly. Most times the builder developer is not engaged in a conversation with the consumer, but the sales agent is. Let's talk about it from the sales perspective. Ali, if you could start off with why there's such a need and what do you believe that the Bermuda Point will do in relationship to meeting that need for workforce and affordable housing? I started with Prosperity Builders almost three years ago this fall when uh, Gregory Ferry was kind of in its infancy. We had not started construction. And with partnership and hand in hand with both the town of Mount Pleasant and Housing for All Mount Pleasant, we were able to construct 36 two bedroom, two and a half bath townhomes strategically located along the Highway 17 corridor. We were able to help individuals who remember one school teacher, she was driving an hour and a half one way to go teach school five days a week and turn around and drive an hour and a half home if she were lucky and there wasn't a traffic accident somewhere that delayed her from getting back to her home and her family. We're going to be able to help more folks at Bermuda Point because of the income requirements that Tony and Tammy spoke of. Denise, if you could chime in, you pointed out that this is newer. Let me frame it that way. But what is your opinion about the need for this type of project in our region and in our community? Like, Do you have a, an idea or an opinion as to how beneficial this is? Bermuda Point project is going to be to the community? I think this Bermuda Point Towns project is huge, not only because it's in the historic district over there in West Ashley, but there's a lot of people that work in West Ashley that commutes all the way from places all the way as far as next to So in order for them to be able, I think it's beautiful they'll be able to work down by, I mean, live down by their work, where they work at, because there's lots of people that live, I live in Goose Creek, they drive downtown every day. They drive Mount Pleasant every day. We all know what traffic on 526, 26 looks like. You have to be at work at 8, 9 o'clock. It's probably going to have to leave at 6 o'clock in the morning, two, two and a half hours. And Lord forgive if there is an accident. <laughs> I think it will be great. These people get to use, spend a lot more time with their families because now they're not spending a whole lot of time commuting. They're also not spending a lot of money, whatever's going on with traffic. Say, for instance, like sometimes you can go home for lunch because you work like right down the street and around the corner instead of I got to go eat out every day or breakfast, lunch. You know, we're keeping those type of hours when you're commuting all the way from that distance. So mm -hmm. I think this is a great job that Tony and Tammy has done with Gregory Ferry. I was there for the end of that. The fact that it does targets workforce housing because those are the people we need in our community. We need those for our community. Police officers, the nurses, the teachers. We couldn't survive without all these people. 
I thank you for that. So look, I'm going to let y'all in on the conversation behind in the studio, behind the curtain this morning when Denise told me that she wasn't going to talk today. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh-uh. So for our listeners, guys, see, you've heard it. We've talked a bit. Let's make sure that, granted, guys, if you hit us on our podcast, catch us on our YouTube channel, guys, information is going to be there for you to link and go to. But if you could do this for us, give us the website where people can go to get more information about Bermuda Point and to request more information from the sales team. They can go to www.bptowns.com. They can go to denise.henderson at Carolina One. They can go to Allie.bring at Carolina One. They can also go to Allie at prosperitybuilder.com or denise at prosperitybuilder.com. My telephone number is 843-291-4281. And Allie's phone number is 843-226-1043. Y'all got all of that. And look here, when y'all do Allie, it's A-L-I. And I want y'all to remember bring, as in she brings it, okay? So she's <laughs> a tremendous opportunity here. And I don't need for y'all to miss that. Please remember Allie at A-L-I at prosperitybuilders.com. Or you can just Google Allie bring, because again, she brings it. Thanks so for the plug, have- Corwin. Look here, I do what I can over here. I really do. Really Appreciate do that. You can coin that phrase right there. Allie brings you home. I love that. Allie brings you home. Yeah, right there. And that's what you guys are doing. Again, I appreciate this conversation because this is so needed within our community. So Allie, there's a process to, okay, hey, I, I, I got more information. I'm very interested. So at that point, what does a consumer need to do? Well, I think that as with any residential purchase, you need to establish a budget. We have three lenders who are very familiar with the workforce housing concept as they were all part of the Gregory Ferry journey. That is Premier Lending, Sonia Pitt and her crew. There is Justin Gooding at United Community Bank. And there is also Dolly Jaffe at Shelter Mortgage. So again, all of those individuals are well-versed with the workforce housing. And they also can help you identify any needs so that you can look at the options for down payment assistance. So first and foremost, and Tony may mention this as well, about preferred lending. And a lot of people don't understand the concept or can't really gather, you know, why they need to use a particular lender. Let's go a little bit further into that, because you may mention these people have been working, these lenders have been working with you all since the previous project. They are familiar with this project, and they are also familiar with the needs as well as the parameters, all the guidelines related to affordable housing, all the paperwork and all that stuff. That relationship, and this is where my question will come in here, Allie, that relationship, how beneficial do you believe that is in making sure that consumers for this project get the highest level of service? I think it's huge. I think that everyone had a really good experience with the familiarity that our lenders had as that relates to deed restrictions and covenants. Outside lenders don't necessarily know that. We did have a couple of folks that chose to go with an outside lender and they missed closing dates because the lenders weren't prepared for all of the nuances that Gregory Ferry or Bermuda Point have. And again, with the ability for down payment assistance, our lenders know that that's out there. I don't know if someone that's not familiar with Bermuda Point, I don't know if they'll know that that's available. So we wouldn't want anybody to miss that opportunity. That is very fair. You may mention of, and guys, our listeners, we are working on getting all of those lenders together as well. We love to have them on to have this conversation because affordable housing, workforce housing, all the nuances, as you may mention, of it's an interesting road to navigate. It's not just as simple as, hey, this person they qualify, they go buy a house. No, they got to fit a particular demographic or income bracket. And that's the demographic we're talking about. And then outside of that, the lender has to be able to accept the restrictions that are associated with the property. It's a process. Once somebody has, again, requested information, now they've talked to a lender and I know there's a process, so we want to kind of get to maybe the next step. So, Denise, 
if you could share what after someone is already okay i'm interested in the project um i like to be a resident there i've talked to a lender lender says i'm qualified whatever bracket that may be what is the next step after that so their next step will come to our workshop tonight at <laughs> <laughs> and then they can hear it firsthand <laughs> then they will go through origin to get their income verification because as we said we have different bands so we need to verify well origin needs to verify the income to make sure they fit in the correct band and then after that they'll fill out the reservation process and on october the 28th we will be accepting the applications to start going through and putting people in to put them in line to qualify for a beauty point town all right perfect so the reservation process is what we're talking about for our listeners. Right. So guys, it, unfortunately, we have probably way more people, bad name probably, we have way more people interested in the project than what we have units available. However, that doesn't mean that all those people that are interested will qualify. We don't want to scare anybody off. We don't want anybody to kind of be reserved. If you're interested, go get the information. So go first review the project, the middle point of BP Towns, I'm sorry, dot com. Please go there, visit. Please click for more information. Let's make sure we get you to one of the lenders. And then let's get you in line for a reservation. Now, reservations currently are working from somewhat of a, what I'll say, of a first come, first serve basis. It's very important that you have done everything on that list prior to is the conversation that we've had. And currently, the reservation date, and guys, I don't know if this is going to change, so please chime in if you believe that it will. But you're expecting to accept, start accepting reservations at the end of October. Um, am I correct? That's correct. Perfect. And Coral okay. might be good to point out on that too. We're phasing the community. It's not like we're we're attempting to sell all 40 units before the end of the year. This first release that will be accepting applications for the end of the month or for the first five townhomes and actually for the first two 80% AMI and the first 300% AMI. So if someone you know, doesn't happen to potentially get in in time for the first round, there will be several more rounds. The vertical construction hopefully will start here within the next 30 days and we'll deliver probably the first 10 units sometime late spring, early summer. But we'll be delivering units beginning you know, late spring, early summer through the end of next year. So if you miss out on this first round, it doesn't mean that you would not have an opportunity in the future. It was saying that I got the goosebumps and the chills because for our listeners, look, I need y'all to understand something. We're in the last quarter of 2022. And if you guys are like me, you're already looking, starting to look forward to 2023 because you're a planner and all this stuff. And inevitably what's going to happen is on Jan 1, somebody's going to wake up with this New Year's resolution. I'm about a house this year. Well, if you are a planner, then now is the time for you to start working on that. And here is an opportunity that, okay, you ain't going to be in the house in January, but I tell you what, if you come on out, we'll make 2023, trustfully, provided, look, if the Lord come down and strike and drop rain and all this other stuff and create delays, look here, that was the Lord's will. But outside of the Lord's will, matter of fact, let me phrase it, there's no outside of the Lord's will, but outside of that happening, that means it is his will that you will make it as quickly as these homes are developing and built, guys. And we got to show up. So I'm going to bring this around to bear. This is the part of the conversation that, guys, we have not had. And I want to make sure that before we end the show that we address it. And just for our listeners, nobody on here. So if y'all watching the video, you see a face kind of contort or something, you know that I caught them off guard. But this is a real opportunity for people of color to be engaged, to have an opportunity. We always have this conversation about this was done for this group or what have you. This is done to serve a need, but you have the opportunity to be present now, to have your seat at the table, guys, so that you can be a part of this community. Workforce and affordable housing, it works. There are plenty of people that have taken advantage of it over the years. The things they don't do is kind of just talk about and all that stuff. They act. So let's not talk about it. Let's not talk about, hey, there, we should be doing this or somebody should be doing that or this or that and the third. The fact of the matter is Tony and Tammy are doing it. So y'all need to show up and do your part. So I'm asking you, 
And Denise, Tammy, if you don't mind, if y'all could echo in on that, y'all need to show up and get this information, be a part of this community, because this is an opportunity for everyone to be on the same playing field. Is that fair? Absolutely, Corwin. And, and what we know, statistical data shows that the quickest way to build wealth is through home ownership, and particularly in communities of color, that the racial home ownership gap, as it's caused, as it's called rather, is persistent. And so we've been very deliberate about our outreach because we want everyone to apply for this opportunity. But we particularly want those in black and brown communities to avail themselves of this opportunity because there tends to be the message that you can't qualify, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's always, you know, of course, the bad news is always reported. What's that saying that bad news makes it around the world before good news puts his pants on in the morning, right? Oh, and so, that's new. I heard that before. I'm going to use that. Right. Well, I had an old boss that would say that, right? And so for this opportunity, we want to share the good news. This is an unprecedented opportunity, we believe, to apply for and secure a home and to secure down payment assistance that makes it comfortable for you. We're interested in people getting these homes, keeping them right the down payment assistance recycles, right? So this opportunity recycles, meaning, you know, once you have this down payment assistance, if, if you leave, there's some resale restrictions so that we can pass on the affordability to the next family. But particularly for communities of color, here's an opportunity to avail yourself of a wonderful townhome in a great community, quality construction. So I appreciate you pointing that out for, and we are absolutely committed to that. That's one of the things for our listeners, and Tony, I'm coming to you next, but that's one of the things in conversation and something I appreciate for our listeners. I need y'all to understand who is building the house that we're talking about you need to buy. I need you to understand that these are people of faith. These are people of strong conviction and belief that are committed to serving the underserved. I'm always reminded when I go down the hallway, I see the Baker roofing signs. There's like a, from Dorchester Road to Montague, there is a line of billboards in this Baker roofing. And it says, I will do good work at a profit if we can, at a loss if we must, but always good work. That always stands out to me. I believe it's a proverb. I believe that essentially kind of where they base that from. But long story short, they will always do good work. You guys are doing good work, not for profit, but for the game that is beyond. And I don't know even why I'm saying this, but that's that's how I feel every time I'm in a room with the two of you. I see the cohesiveness of how you guys are working together to carry out a large emotional at times, yes. Is this something that we're all sensitive to? Yes, but you guys are setting out to do that. Tony, your commitment to this, to serving that underserved population, if you can touch on where that comes from, I would really appreciate that. You could have given me a heads up on that question, Corwin. <laughs> Fair enough. It's twofold. Number one, I mean, Tammy told you we went to, you know, we're both from Lancaster. We went to high school together. I'm older than Tammy, as you know, can tell. Tammy and I have worked together kind of on and off probably for 10 or 12 years, yeah. probably since late 2000s. Tammy, I guess, approached us, what, three or four years ago, and basically it said, hey, you know, I really would like to learn more about what you do, building, and, you know, I've always thought she's a rock star. I mean, she's smart. She's articulate. That was part of the motivation is it's, it was an interest that she had in trying to understand what we did. I tell you, there's a selfish part. I mean, we made a profit at Gregory Ferry. Will we retire off that project? No. <laughs> Did we get rich? No. But was it a profitable venture that made it worthwhile? Absolutely. Do we hope Bermuda Point will be a profitable venture? Yes, we do. So it's a combination of one, really enjoying working with Tammy and wanting to support you know, her efforts and goals. It's a business decision. Like Tammy said earlier, we say it always starts with an Excel spreadsheet and you start at the end and work your way back. Mm -hmm. It's a huge underserved need. Mm -hmm. And I think we're all just thankful that we've been fortunate enough to kind of put together what's probably about a dozen best practices that I don't 
think there's anyone else in the industry that's probably as laser focused on those practices that if they're done right, they spit out in the end what you're seeing. For every project we do, we look at 25. There was a comment you made earlier about all the people at the table. There's one final piece at the table that's the hardest piece, and that's the land. Mm. Uh, Gregory Ferry, the sellers were willing to sell at a price that was reasonable. Bermuda Point, the property owner, was willing to actually put the land into the partnership as a joint venture. I would say the hardest part of what we do probably is the land side, finding the land opportunities at the right price with the right terms, because that's always in that Excel spreadsheet, that very top item is land. Mm-hmm. You don't have a project until you have land. It's We're thankful to be part of, it's a team effort. It's not any one person. It's Tammy, it's Denise, it's Allie, it's you. The CRC is City of Charleston. It's our lenders. It's our builder. It's our site contractor. It's a village. It's, what do they say? It takes a village to raise a kid. It takes a village to do this. So just glad to be part of it. So you guys are doing a tremendous job. So I want to wrap up today's show first and foremost by telling you thank you. I'm saying thank you for a number of reasons. One, not most important, but for being on today's show. Two, this is more important for for taking this on. I'm in this season that I am talking about calling. I am talking about the things that God gives you and puts in front of you. And he will put you where you're supposed to be with the people you're supposed to be with to carry out the things that he wants you to do. And I am reminded of that oftentimes in relationship to this project, because this is an undertaking that I've never seen done that I am glad that I have the opportunity to be here with you on. And more importantly, in my mind, I'm going to be driving through that community periodically just to see how the people feel, how to go just drive through just to engage them and how happy they are that an opportunity like this was created and that they were able to to capitalize and take advantage of it. Denise, Ali, thank you guys again um, so much for being um, on the show today. Um, if you don't mind, one more time, um, Denise, can you give the website for people to go to to get more information about Bermuda Point Towns? And yes, you're going to talk today. <laughs> www.bptowns.com or you can contact Ali at prosperitybuilder.com at 843-226-1043 or you can contact myself at Denise Henderson at 843-291-4281 or Denise at prosperitybuilders.com, or you can awesome. contact me at denise.henderson at carolina1.com. Awesome. So guys, again, thank you all so much for being on the show today. Super excited for our listeners. Again, thank you all for, for tuning in, for listening, for getting this information. And let's come out and let's break the website. So in closing, guys, as I always say to you, our listeners, um, but I'm going to say this also to our extra special guest today. I love you. I love you. I love you, and I'm going to see you guys out there in them streets. Y'all don't go nowhere.